So the quick announcement is that there is, I have uploaded the assignment one on, um, on Carmen. So you should be able to access the assignment. Uh, very simple questions and probably you're not going to take much time to do those questions. So uh, the assignment is due on Friday, 5 p.m. and it has to be uploaded on Carmen. So you can just write something on a sheet of paper, scan it or just take a picture and upload it as a PDF. Uh, what is important as you upload it as a PDF and not as a JPEG or uh, you know uh, some other file format. So it's easier for the grader to see it, write comments and so on. Uh, currently uh, for this, this particular assignment, we don't need to use MATLAB, but uh, I will be giving subsequent assignments where MATLAB would be needed. So if you are rusty on MATLAB or you want to learn some signal processing type uh, commands in MATLAB, I think this is a good time for you to get started and just try practicing some things on your own and so that it's easier for you to uh, complete the assignments in the future. Uh, next week on Friday, we have, so Friday next week is the first quiz. This is an in-class quiz, which means that during the class time, you will have to log into your Carmen and you will have to take that quiz. Uh, there will be no classes on Friday next week uh, because that's the quiz time. So you will be taking the quiz during the class time uh, and it will be open notes. You can look at your notes while you are taking the quiz. That's not a problem. Uh, but certainly you can't take help from uh, Stack Exchange or Reddit or whatever other online uh, systems you are more familiar with. Okay, uh, we'll get started for today's lecture. So, so far we have been talking about signals and we talked about exponential signals, periodic signals, unit impulse and unit step signals. Uh, today we are going to talk about systems. And a simple definition of system is it's an interconnection of various components and devices. So a motor is a system, speaker is a system, motor, speaker, wheel, car, engine, these are all systems, okay? So there is a very complex interconnection of various components within each of these systems. And one thing you will see is uh, you can compose systems to create an even bigger system, right? So a car is composed of an engine and wheel Right, so car is itself a system, but if you look at, so from a high level, car is a system, but if you get into the car, then engine is one system, wheel is another system, powertrain would be you know, the third system. Okay, so the, so the general definition of system is extremely broad and you can go to any level from a very small microscopic level to very large systems level. Okay, so what does a system do? Well, system has actually a very specific role in our lives, which is it takes an input signal and it generates an output signal. So the speaker would take an input signal in the form of an electric pulse and it will generate sound, which is the output signal of the speaker. A motor would again take electric signal, like a DC current, a DC motor would take DC current and it will convert it into rotational speed. And so on and so forth. Car will take inputs from accelerator and brake and it will convert it into velocity.
ओके सो देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ सिस्टम्स दैट वी विल बी कंसर्न विद इन दिस पर्टिकुलर क्लास वन इज कंटिन्यूस टाइम सिस्टम which takes as input a continuous time signal and outputs a continuous time signal and then there is discrete time system which takes a discrete time signal and outputs a discrete time signal okay any question so far okay so we are going to talk about so let's look at a very simple example of an rc circuit and it looks as follows so i have a voltage source vs it goes through a resistor goes through a capacitor this is our favorite system right vc or yeah vc so voltage across capacitor this is capacitor this is resistor um and this is a simple rc circuit and what this rc circuit does it it transforms the input signal is this vs this is the input signal and it produces a out, output signal vc which is also a voltage signal actually in this case okay now the question is how do i know uh, how the output gets transformed by the input signal like what does this system do so let's let's try to figure that out let me denote the current through this particular loop as it so all of this sorry this is all function of time so let me make sure these are all function of time the current is function of time continuous so it's a continuous time system the resistance is constant the capacitor is constant so capacitance is constant in this case okay what do i know so let me write the potential across these two points as vr so i know that it this is the equation 1 i know that it is equal to vct minus vst over r so the current is potential difference over resistor re resistance r and the second equation i know is it equals to c d vct over dt so capacitance multiplied by the rate of change of voltage that's equal to the current through the capacitor i have two equations 
and I want to eliminate I of T. So I just want to know the relationship between VC and VS. So I know the important thing to note is I want to know the relationship between VC and VS. So I need to eliminate I of T from this equation. Okay, so I have two equations. I have three unknowns, VC, VS, and IT, and I have two equations. So I can definitely eliminate uh, one variable, which is IT. That's what I want to uh, eliminate. So I can just make these two quantities equal and I'll get a relationship between VC and VS. So let's do that. I have VC T minus VS T over R equals to C DVCT over DT. Now I'm going to rearrange this equation in a specific format. Well, uh, uh, at this time, any questions from the class? I'm assuming everyone is pretty familiar with this RC circuit. It's like the usual thing you learn at the beginning of every class. So I guess you're all familiar with it. So I'm going to uh, write it in a certain fashion. So let's 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 write it that way. So I have C D V C over D T plus V C T over R equals to V S T over R. I'm going to simplify it further. All of these are actually equivalent statements. Okay, so the first statement is the same as second statement, which is the same as the third statement. But the reason why I'm writing it in this fashion is because now I have the input signal on the right side of the equation. And I have the output signal or all the quantities that depend on the output signal on the left side of this equation. Okay, and this is typically the standard way to write differential equations in the context of signals and systems and all the classes you will ever take after signals and systems. So like in controls, we are going to use an equation of similar type where we have the output signal differential equation on one side and the input signal part of the differential equation on the other side, on the right side. That's just the convention, there is no reason why it should be written this way, but it's just the convention which is easier to understand. Okay. So now what we see is uh, the relationship between the input and output signal is actually given in the form of a differential equation. And that's pretty much going to be the theme in signals and systems as well as in the uh, subsequent classes that you will be taking in control area and all that for a very long time. So unless you start taking like 6,000 or 7,000 level classes, uh, you will pretty much be thinking about systems of this type where the system is actually described by a differential equation where on one side of the differential equation, you have input signals and derivatives of the input signal. And on the other side of the differential equation, you have output signals and the time derivatives of the output signal. So that's that's just, um, this is a model that is usually satisfied by a large variety of systems. And that's why this is something that we study 
um, you know, uh, as we study uh, repeatedly in multiple classes. Now, this type of system is typically called first order linear differential equation. This is a first order linear differential equation. First order because the output signal is differentiated once. Uh, linear because of some reason that we will understand in the next class and it's a differential equation which is quite obvious. There is time derivative involved in this in this prop in this uh, equation. Okay. So more generally, first order linear differential equations are written in the following form, dy t over dt plus a y t equals to b x t. So this is how you would write a linear differential equation where x t is the input, y t is the output of the system. Any questions so far? Well, I think there should be a negative sign uh, behind the first derivative. Negative sign behind the first derivative. Let me check. Uh, so in the book, there is no negative sign. I don't think there should be a negative sign either. I don't think the book is wrong on this. Okay, I'll see it later. Yeah, yeah. I think the way oh, that it is uh, yeah. written there. That's right, this is wrong. Okay, now I understand why there is a, there is a mistake here. This should be VS and this should be VC. Thank you for pointing that out. This should be VS, this should be VC. And now I think everything makes sense. Yeah, okay. Um, does that make sense now? Yep. IT is VS minus VC over R. So that was my mistake. I made a mistake in copying from the book. Okay. Um, so let's move on to the next topic, which is uh, linear difference equation. So first order linear difference equation. So in the continuous time, you saw what the differential equation looks like. Um, in the discrete time, uh, the first order linear difference equation is given by this form. And then there are higher order uh, linear difference equations, which we will study in subsequent lectures. So the second order would look like yn. So this is first order a y n minus one plus b y n minus two equals to c x n. So this is the second order linear difference equation. Okay. So what, what I wanted to say 
in this part is every system can be modeled as a difference equation in discrete time or a differential. No, I shouldn't say every system, but most system can be modeled as a difference equation or a differential equation, depending on you're in discrete time or continuous time. Okay, now I come to a very important point in the whole signals and systems and all the subsequent areas that depends on signals and systems. And this is a usual uh, thing we, we basically, it's just the usual saying within um, systems area that all models are wrong, but some are useful. Okay, so this is something you should always remember. So we just derived a, mod a model for, R for an RC circuit it, it was a differential equation, first order linear differential equation. And it turns out that it's it's a wrong model for a realistic system. And I'll, I'll tell you why it's a wrong model, but it is actually a useful model. So what do I mean by model is wrong, but useful? So why is, so let's look at it. Why is the model wrong? So first of all, when you plug in the value of the resistance and the capacitance in the difference equation, uh, it turns out that the resistance actually depends on the temperature. So resistance slash capacitance would depend on temperature. So at what temperature it is operating, it would depend on the manufacturing defects So a manufacturer says, well, I'm giving you a capacitor with uh, this much. Uh, uh, so I'm giving you a capacitor of this capacitance, but because of manufacturing defects, the actual capacitance that is written on that capacitor may be off by a little bit. Not by a huge margin, but it'll be off by a little bit. So there are manufacturing defects because of which the capacitance would be slightly different from what you actually think it is. Uh, it could depend on the voltage and current. And it could depend on the loading patterns. So by loading patterns, I mean that a resistance that is being used for the last 30 years is not the same resistance as it would be if it were a new resistor, which was put in service like one year ago or six months ago. So if you look at the electricity grid that we have, many of the subsystems within the electricity grid would be 20 years old, 30 years old, 40 years old, and so on. Um, so certainly when the, when the material was new, it had different properties. And after like 30 years or 40 years, the, some of the material properties would have changed. So they no longer, um, uh, have the same values as what it was when it was new uh, 20 or 30 years ago, right? So because of all these reasons, the model that you may have for the transformer or for the resistor or for the capacitor, they're all wrong. But the fact of the matter is that the difference between what you think the value is and what the actual value is, that difference is actually negligible Okay, so in some sense, whatever control system you design on top of it or whatever signal processing methods you design on top of it, they are still useful and uh, they still work over long periods of time. And that's what we mean by the models are useful. So you derive a differential equation model assuming some assumptions are satisfied, even though those assumptions are not satisfied by reality, but it still gives you some useful insight about how to control the system, how to process the signals and so on. And that has led to a lot of advancement in the field of uh, electrical engineering, as you all can see around yourself. Uh, could you turn to the previous page? Yes. Yeah, thank you. 
sure any questions so far professor yeah. uh in, for, in your uh, yeah on this slide should there be a constant in front of uh, x of n ah uh, so uh, then it then it won't be a linear system anymore so there should not be a, so this is a constant c in front of x of n but are you saying like plus d a constant plus d like this no 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 i mean in the first order equation oh yeah okay here all right yeah you can add b yes for sure okay i just wanted to be sure thank yeah, you yeah, yeah yeah thanks okay Cool. So now we can talk about interconnection of systems. A system in itself is not very useful. It has to be interconnected to build something useful. So a wheel in itself is not very useful. But if you put it on top of an engine with a powertrain and with some other peripheral devices, it becomes a car. And that car is actually extremely useful because it takes you from one point to another very safely. So interconnection of system basically talks about how the systems can be interconnected and, um, and how does that change the input output behavior of the system. So there are essentially uh, four types of interconnections that are very, very widely used. So first is series interconnection, where you have system one. So you give it an input xt. It has it produces an output y1t that goes into system two as input, and then it outputs y of t. Okay, so in the context of a car, you the system one could be an engine which converts the input accelerator or brake pedal commands into uh, certain torques on the wheel. Okay, and that torque on the wheel gets transformed by the wheel into the velocity or whatever. Yeah, I think velocity is a good um, output of a car. So. The input would be accelerator or brake position. And through the engine, it converts into a torque at the wheel. And the torque at the wheel gets converted because of the wheel, it gets converted into velocity, which is the output of the overall interconnection. Okay, so that's a series interconnection. System two comes after system one. And the output of system one becomes the input to system two. Another type of interconnection is parallel interconnection. So in the parallel interconnection, the same input goes to two separate systems. Each of the system will produce different output, y1t and y2t, and they will all get added 
together to produce y of t. Okay, so that leads to a parallel interconnection. The same input goes to both these systems. It will produce different outputs, y1t and y2t. Both of them will get added to become y of t, which is the overall output of this parallelly interconnected system. The third type of interconnection is series parallel interconnection. which is basically a combination of the two ideas, series and parallel combination, the interconnection. So let me give you an example. You have the input XT. So this is system one, two, three, four. And this is the output. So you have a bunch of system in series, then bunch of systems in parallel. And that leads to a series parallel interconnection. Okay, and then there is a fourth kind of interconnection called feedback interconnection, which is this is XT. And this is yt. So this is uh, called a feedback connection. If you take EC3551, the whole class is about feedback control systems. So you will learn a lot about these feedback systems in 3551. So what happens in a feedback system is, uh, let's, let's, let's consider the, so there are two types of feedback. One is positive feedback where, okay, well, I'll have to explain it in a bit. Okay, so let's look at it. Let's look at the positive feedback case. So this is XT, this is YT. Let me call it E, no, uh, ZT and let me call this uh what should i call it 
एक्स वाई जी यू टी ओके सो वट हैपन्स इन दिस पर्टिकुलर पॉजिटिव फीडबैक इंटर कनेक्शन इज the z the, the zt here is actually a combination of xt and ut so zt is actually a combination of xt plus ut and ut actually is an output of the system 2 system 1 system 2 so what happens here is that yt the output of the overall system goes as an input to system 2 system 2 transforms that input to ut and that ut gets added to xt the input signal to produce zt and that zt goes through system 1 to produce yt so it's like a Uh, it's like a feedback system where the output gets fed back as input to the system one okay and this is a positive feedback system now if i can if i make it negative here then zt is actually xt minus ut so depending on whether it's positive then it's a positive feedback system if this sign is negative then this is a negative feedback system okay so this is feedback interconnection so one example of a negative feedback system again let's consider the rc circuit this is it so the vt is output of this rc circuit and uh, it is the it is the input vt is the output and this is a feedback interconnection because i1t i2t so as you can see i1t is actually equal to it minus i2t so this is the negative sign and i2t itself is actually vt over r so i2t depends on the output of the system and uh system 2 what it transforms what system 2 does it takes the voltage as input and converts it into current by dividing it by r the resistance so you get i2t i2t basically gets uh i i2t gets subtracted from the input i of t to produce i1 of t so that's what this feedback interconnection uh, idea is so yeah this is the feedback interconnection so if you want to write it in the system 1 system 2 format it would look something like in the feedback interconnection form it's going to look something like this
This is an example of a feedback interconnection. Any questions so far? Okay, let's quickly recap what we have done so far. So we talked about we talked about systems. Systems is interconnection of various components. It transforms input signal to output signal. We looked at an example of an RC circuit and how to derive the differential equation for that particular system, which is an RC circuit system, right? Uh, typically in this class and in many other undergraduate classes, you will largely be concerned with linear differential equations because it's rather easy to solve and a large number of systems can be approximated by linear differential equations. And we talked about first order linear difference equations and first order linear differential equations. Those are the two uh, very simple um, equations that governs a large number of systems. We talked about the fact that many models are wrong because you make a lot of modeling approximations when you are deriving the system equations but they often yield useful insight about how to design the system and how to interconnect the system so that you get a desired output. And that desired output is good enough for practical applications. We don't want to do a very sophisticated modeling of the system and get a very, very accurate picture because such an accurate picture is typically not needed in practice. So if you want to drive your car at 35 miles an hour and uh, you know, as long as you are driving between 34 miles an hour and 36 miles an hour, it's completely fine. Uh, it's not really going to wreak havoc um, if you are off by a certain point here and there. Then we talked about interconnection of systems. There are essentially four different types of interconnections that are widely used. Uh, series interconnection where the output of one system becomes the input to the second system parallel interconnection where the same input goes into two separate systems and their outputs are combined to get the overall output of the overall system. Then you have series parallel interconnection where, which is a hybrid of series and parallel interconnection. Um, most of the systems you would encounter in real world would be of series parallel type and feedback type. And then the fourth, and in my opinion, the most important class of interconnections is feedback interconnection, where uh, the output of the system is fed back into the system through some sort of, uh, through some other sub subsystem of that original system. So the output gets fed back as input to the system, or at least it gets added to the input or subtracted from the input to the system. And we saw an easy example, an RC circuit as a feedback interconnection of systems. Okay, any questions so far? I have one. Yes. Uh, uh, in that uh, integral, what is the... Uh, uh, yeah, the uh, is, integration this variable. Tau. This is tau. Okay. Um, why do we need tau? Or like, why did we change it? So, so basically, we are using time as the uh, the variable that is being used everywhere. So, when you are doing integration, you want t to be the limit. So that's why I just changed the name of the variable over which you are integrating the current. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So t is in the limit. I, I want you to notice this part. t is in the limit, so I can't really use t here. It has to be a different symbol. OK. Let's talk about properties of, of systems. So whenever we talk about systems, there are a lot of different properties that the systems must satisfy. Let me write down those properties and we'll talk about in more details in the next class. The first property that we will be discussing is memoryless property. 
second property would be invertibility memoryless system invertible system causal system stable system time invariant system and linear system these are six different properties of systems that we will be studying in the next class so what is a memoryless system well the output would not depend on the previous inputs uh, that's a memoryless system invertible system means that you can look at the output and you can infer what the input to the system was and so uh, one way to one easy uh, example of an invertible system is zipping the file so you can think of your file as a signal you zip it right and you get an output which is a zip file now the zip file can be unzipped in order for you to get the files back okay so the this compression algorithm is actually an invertible system because you can invert the output and get the input to that system okay so zipping is an invertible system um an example of a non invertible system would be uh, converting an image into jpeg so jpeg is what is known as lossy compression algorithm um we'll probably talk about it in details in the in one of the coding assignments towards the uh maybe in march or april when we talk about compression so uh so that's a example of a non invertible system because by looking at the jpeg image you can't actually recover the original image which probably was uh Uh, in the png format or some other format which was not loss lossy compression causal system means that the output depends on the inputs that has been seen in the past okay so while we are discussing here on zoom it's a causal system uh, it's actually a memoryless system as well uh, so it's a causal system because the output which is the voice you are hearing right now is also the voice that i am making right now or maybe like 100 milliseconds or 10 milliseconds ago okay so it's a causal system a non causal system is the one where you can actually you have the entire time series and you're looking at the entire time series in order to uh change the output so you're looking at the entire input from x0 all the way to x infinity or x minus infinity all the way to x plus infinity in order to compute the y of t so that's a non causal system a uh, stable system is uh, one in which there is some sort of stability property so if the input is bounded the output will be bounded or if the input is uh, has finite energy then the output will also have finite energy and so on and so forth so that's a example of stable system uh, the bridge collapse video that i showed you in lecture 2 which unfortunately wasn't recorded Uh, so the bridge collapse video was an example of an unstable system because the bridge was uh, getting excited because of the uh, air flow the wind and that caused the system to become unstable and it basically broke down it collapsed uh, at some point of time so that's an example of a stable system sorry unstable system um time invariant system means that it doesn't matter when you start the system the output depends purely on the input and not on when you actually started the system when you when you turned on the system uh, we'll we'll look at a more mathematical definition in the next class and then there is linear system where which means that the if you add two signals two input signals the output will be the sum of the output from individual signal so that's an example of a linear system 
And when we talked about the linear differential equations or linear difference equations, those are all examples of linear systems. So we are going to go through the mathematical uh, expressions for what it what constitutes memoryless system, invertible system, causal system, stable system, time invariant system, and linear systems in the next class. And then we'll cover a few examples uh, of uh, these systems. And uh, then that's the end of chapter one. Now, you know, I still have five minutes left, so I probably want to ask a very quick question from the class. So the quiz one is due in the next week. Um, is that is it okay for me to give you questions on systems in quiz one, even though you may not have done assignments about the systems? Uh, before quiz one, or do you actually want to have an assignment before I ask those questions in the quiz? So what's the preference of the class? Maybe you can write in chat box so I can aggregate the preference of the entire class. So the question is, do you want to see a question in the quiz which you have not seen uh, on a topic which you have not seen in the assignments before? Okay, so everybody wants to have an assignment first. Uh, okay, let me think about it. Maybe I'll change the date of the quiz uh, so that I don't only ask you questions about signals because signals is a very small topic. Uh, okay, so I guess uh, I'll change the date of the quiz. So assignment two will be assignment two will be due next week on Friday. And then the quiz date will be probably first Friday of February or something so that I can talk to you. I can ask you questions both on signals and systems in the quiz one. And so for the subsequent quizzes, uh, I'll follow the same criteria. Uh, I'll make sure that the topics of the quiz are the same as the ones for which you have already done the assignment. So that way, you know what kind of questions will be coming in the quiz because you have done the assignments before. All right. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I'll see you guys on Friday. And if you have any questions, I'll just stop the recording. Please uh, feel free to stay back and you can ask me any questions you may have. <laughs>